Hello ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to learn how to make this animated PowerPoint slide step by step, well then just keep on watching. Before we start, I want to say huge thanks to all of my fans who support me on Patreon.com. On my Patreon page you'll find my video posts with tutorial slides attached. Some of the posts are public and some of the posts are reserved to my biggest fans. So if you like what I do, feel free to support me on Patreon as much or as little as you want. I appreciate it very much. And now let's continue with the video. So first of all, let's look at the finished slide and see what kind of objects we will have to create. So as you can see here on the left side, we have a couple of text boxes, a smaller text and a beautiful button, which is actually a rounded rectangle. That's super duper awesome. And here on the right side we have this beautiful graphical element. As you can see we can select different parts of it. We can select these persons. That's uh, super awesome. And you know what? It is absolutely possible to draw this kind of you know, graphical element on PowerPoint from scratch. And if you'd like to learn how it's done, you can check out one of my previous tutorials. For example, uh, this one how to design and animate on PowerPoint, that's uh, really awesome. Or you can watch this tutorial as well. Here I show you how you can draw this uh, vector shape, this vector dog as well, so that's uh, pretty useful. But today we will save a lot of time and use this free beautiful graphical element from uh, freepick.com, which was created by Picky Superstar. So just uh, click on the green button, don't forget to credit the author, credits in the video description and just download the file. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the file format provided by freepick.com is EPS, so you will have to convert the EPS file to SVG before importing to PowerPoint. So I did the conversion using Adobe Illustrator and if you don't have Adobe Illustrator you can use free online services such as cloudconvert.com. All right, so let's continue. So let's open up a fresh blank new presentation and let's set the slide layout to blank. That's beautiful. And now let's just insert our beautiful graphical SVG element. That's awesome. We can increase the size of it. Nice, and now let's just click on the button convert to shape. This will convert our graphical element to editable shapes. That's beautiful. And we can ungroup this graphical element. And now we can see all of the separate objects that make up this graphical element. That's beautiful. We can select the separate objects and we can change the color of those objects. We can change the size of those objects and so on. And for changing the colors of your objects, I would suggest first of all to set a color palette that you would like to use. And we can set a color palette by going to the design tab, then just find this small triangle, expand it, go to colors and here you will find a drop down list of many different palettes. So let's just choose this one called red violet. And now you can choose any graphical element that you have Select it, go to Shape Fill Options and choose any color from your palette that you like, for example this one. We can even check with my finished slide and see what kind of color I was using there. And I think this is the exact color I was using, so that's pretty awesome. So uh, yeah, feel free to choose any colors that you want from your you know, active color palette. That's beautiful. Let's change the color of these shadows as well. That's awesome. And by the way, you can as well apply gradient fills to your graphical elements. So we can just copy this gradient fill and paste it to this uh, part of the phone. That's awesome. And gradient fill is just uh, two colors. Uh, one color is on the left side and the second color is on the right side. Just make sure that you choose colors from your color palette. That's beautiful. And the biggest advantage of using colors from your color palette is that later on, if you'd like to change the look of your graphical elements, all you have to do is change the color palette. So with one mouse click, you can completely change the look of your graphical elements. So that's really awesome. 
So let's try out a different palette, for example, uh, this one called yellow. And as you can see, the color of all of the objects has uh, changed instantly. So that's uh, really awesome and really flexible. So let's say you have colored all of your objects the way you want. And the next step would be to group the objects in relevant groups. So for example, you can group all of the objects that make up this girl and this uh, chat box. That could be one group of the elements. And grouping elements into you know, relevant groups will really help you later on when we will have to add you know, separate fly-in animations. So just group your elements into relevant groups. And yeah, just right click and click on group. And in the selection pane, you can name your groups so that it's easier for you to understand which group is which. So for example, this one, we can call it a girl. And let's save a little bit of time here as well. Let's uh, delete all of these objects. And let's just copy the graphical elements from my finished slide. Drag with your mouse and click on Command C or Control C if you're on Windows. And let's paste it into this slide. All right. And here in the selection pane, we can see that I have already named all of the groups so that I can better see, you know, which group is which. And by clicking on the eyeball icon, you can make sure that you have correctly, you know, named your groups. That's beautiful. All right, so let's select all of the graphical elements and let's move them back to the right side of the slide. That's beautiful. Now let's actually talk about how to make this animation fly in with some beautiful bounce at the end. So let's just go to the animation tab and let's click on the animation pane. And here you can see all of the animations that are applied to the slide objects. That's beautiful. So you can see we're using fly in animation. A fly in direction is from top and in the effect options we have some bounce and activated. That's awesome. Uh, let me quickly explain to you what is bounce end. So let's just insert a simple circle in the center of the slide. Hold down the shift key if you want a perfect circle. And let's just go to animations. Let's choose fly in. Let's choose direction from top. And when we play the animation, as you can see, the circle comes down, but with no bounce. And now let's choose the bounce end. And now you can see there's a little bit of bounce at the end of the animation. That's awesome. And I'm using PowerPoint for Mac. And the slight limitation of this, you know, PowerPoint for Mac version is that you cannot actually adjust how big the bounce end is. And if you're using PowerPoint for Windows, you can actually set the, you know, any amount of bounce end that you want. But don't worry, guys, I have you covered. So, you know, on my Windows laptop, I have created a couple of bounce end animations with uh, different bouncing ends. So bounce end one, bounce end two and bounce end three. And now we can just use the animation painter, for example, and copy this animation from this circle bounce end one. And we can apply this, you know, animation to any objects that we want. So, yeah, in case you're using PowerPoint for Mac, you can always create those bouncing end animations on your Windows computer. That could be one solution. And now let's paste one of those bouncing circles into the slide. Command V to paste. And let's just select it and drag it to the left side of the slide so that we can better see it. And now let's just go to selection pane. And let's just hide all of the objects. And let's just make sure that we unhide the bouncing circle and we unhide the most bottom group of graphical elements. Now we can select the circle, go to animations, click on the animation painter and paste the animation to this most bottom group. That's awesome. We can delete the circle. That's beautiful. So now when we go to animation pane, we can see that this bounce end animation is applied to this graphical element. And let's make sure that the fly in direction is from top. And as you can see, we're getting this beautiful bounce and fly in animation. That's awesome. So now we can go to the selection pane and unhide the next object, which is sky 2. So now we can select the most bottom group, uh, click on the animation painter and paste the animation to sky number two. Just make sure that for sky number two, we add a little bit of delay, for example, 0.1 seconds. That's awesome. Now we can give it a preview. 
As you can see, the sky element comes down with a little bit of delay. That's beautiful. So now we can unhide the next object and now we can copy the animation from sky number two and paste it to sky. And once again, let's make sure that we add a little bit of time delay. In this case, it's going to be 0.2 seconds. So as you can see, this is a pretty repetitive process. Just basically select the last object, uh, copy the animation and apply it to the next object and add a 0.1 increment delay. That's all. So I'll just speed up a little bit and I'll meet you in a second. So ladies and gentlemen, I have finished adding all of the animations and here you can see all of them in the animation pane. And here, as you can see, I have added delays increasing by 0.1 second for each of the animations. So that we have this uh, beautiful bouncing end delayed effect. That's awesome. And now let's just check out our animations from the start. This is how it looks like. That's beautiful. Now all that's left uh, to take care of are these text boxes on the left side. So let's just copy them from my finished slide and let's just copy and paste them here. As you can see in the animation pane, all of these animations now are in the bottom. So let's just uh, select them and drag them to the top. All right, and as you can see, the first animation starts uh, with a click and the rest of the animations start with previous. So this is the finished result, ladies and gentlemen. And now you know how you can make this kind of animated slide in PowerPoint. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and you have learned something new. Please let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions. And now I leave you with a couple of beautiful slides with uh, different color palettes applied. And thank you for watching and I'll see you on my next video.